Hello and welcome to another Writerly Witterings with a cup of tea. My name is Michael Jax and I'm doing a project right now where I'm looking at different <coughs> pens, inks, writing materials um, and today I've got four pens I'm going to talk about. The main one is the intriguing one that's in the box. Opus 88. So let's see what there is. Right, so here we have it. One very delightful box. Nice cardboard box. Opus 88. Fine writing instruments. And it says on the side here that it is an Opus 88 Coloro, or Coloro, don't know which, medium nib. Now, I've had this for a week or so, and I am enormously indebted <coughs> to James Theobald, who sent it through for me. Uh, he heard that I was doing a bit more reviewing, and he wanted me to have a look at this pen. So here we are. I do like this box, by the way. It's cardboard, but it's ni nicely designed, because it's got magnetic tabs on the bottom. You can hear it clicking shut when you, open, when you let it fall shut fall back. Inside, three items. One, instruction manual. Two, an eyedropper. And three, a pen. So let's look at them in sequence. First of all, the instructions are pretty basic, but you don't need to have too much to be able to understand how to use this pen. Japanese one side, English the other. So obviously, Take the cap off, unscrew the section, fill up the eyedropper with ink, drip the ink into the main section, screw it up again, and then when you want to write, you unscrew the end knob and the ink will flow. Pretty straightforward, I would say. Now, I don't know about you, but I've never used an ink dropper before, so this is a novel experience. All I've ever done is fill this with water when I was trying to do a demonstration of how much different pen types would hold in terms of ink. And this came out second from the top, I seem to recall. So, let's have a look. Simple pen, chrome fixings, which I rather like. Uh, it has got sort of ribbing down the sides there. Good strong clip. I don't get the impression that's liable to let the pen fall out of my pocket at any time soon. It's got a clear section here with an end knob that's some more opaque plastic, opaque plastic, opaque plastic, and then another clear section there in the middle of the cap. You can see the nib moving as I rotate it there. What's the top of the cap like? Just plain. So it's a, it's a very understated type of pen. It's a good size, it's a meaty size. If I put it against um, one of these preppies, for example, it's not a dissimilar length, slightly longer in the cap. If I look at one of my Visconti Homo sapiens, for example, it's a little bit smaller, but again, only by a tiny amount. So it's a good size. It's the sort of pen size that I rather like. What's it like inside? Well, as you can see, there's a slight flare there, which is nice. Your fingers don't slide straight off the end and onto the nib. The nib itself it's got just a little bit of scroll work around the edges, but apart from that, it says Opus 88 and M for medium. Now the interesting thing with these pens, as the instructions just showed, is to fill it, you unscrew the section from the barrel. There's an O-ring I can see there to stop any leaks. Always a good idea. But in here, there is a lock-off mechanism. You can see this sort of bung in the top there. If I unscrew the end section, 
that pulls that bung further inside. Put it all the way down and it disappears completely. And then as I screw it back up again, it becomes more visible. That acts against the back here. There is a chamfered surround there and the bung will go straight in and stop any ink from flowing. So when it's like this, with that pulled out at the back there, just turn off those multiple lights, make it a little bit easier to see. If I just move this out of the way, that'll probably help as well. So you can see there, I think, that the top of the piston is right there, but as you pull it back down, here it comes. So screw that tight shut, all the ink will be held in the reservoir, nothing will get into the front, which is a good idea, I think. Now let's try putting some ink into this. Now I did mull this over for quite some time before I th could think of an ink that I quite like testing and I thought why not have some China Blue. I've had this diamine ink for some time and I never seem to find the right pen to use it in so let's just try some in here now. I'm not going to fill the pen to the completely to the brim because it's a bit pointless. This is what happens when you forget that you're going to fill a pen and you leave it the nib section on. I do like China Blue. It's a good bright blue colour as you can see. So there's a bit of ink in there now. Lid on the ink bottle before it goes somewhere. nib joining up with the barrel diamine china blue used And then it's a K, isn't it, Colorado? Hmm. I must admit, that feels really lovely. The pen itself is a good length. I wouldn't want to use it posted, but then I don't normally want to use any pen posted. It will certainly fit, but it, it doesn't actually make it feel overly unbalanced, but um, just doesn't feel quite right. this paper. It's Rhodia. I have in the past, as you can see when using a fatter nib, had quite a lot of bleed through. Not so much feathering surprisingly enough, but quite a lot of bleed through. But with this, the nib is fine enough, or medium enough if you prefer, <laughs> not to do anything at all. That is a really lovely feeling pen actually. That is very nice. Very grateful to James Fibble for the use of this pen, which will be used a lot. And just to test it. The best way always to test how well the feed works is to do one of my signatures because they do get through the ink. That is a lovely pen. I'm very, very pleased with that. Thank you very much indeed, James. I'm enormously grateful. And now, having finished a little writing example, I'm going to do something which is a bit different. 
These are three pens that I was given a while ago to have a look at and play with. This is a 0.2 nib, this is a 0.3 nib and this is a 0.5 nib I think. Yes, yeah, 0.5. And these pens are really excellent. These preppies are really simple. You could almost think they were disposable pens, but they're not. They're perfectly usable, workable pens. Very, very simple mechanism, easy to clean. They have usually, I'll demonstrate, they're designed to take these quite enormous platinum ink cartridges which do hold a good amount of ink and they last for ages but what I've done is because I have a large number of pens that take international standard cartridges I have bought a little converter that fits inside there and that means that these things will take just any ordinary Caveco or Diamine or any other standard type of cartridge. And the reason why I'm mentioning them is these two, the point 0.2 and the point 0.3, I'm using quite regularly now for sketches. They're very, very good little pens for using with um, pen and ink when you want to do a little bit of watercolour washing. This, however, I've had for ages and I've hardly used it. And it is a great little pen. It really is. It's got a lovely smooth medium nib. That 0.5 is a medium really to me. Um, and as you can see it's completely undamaged. But it seems pointless to me having things that take up space if I've got no use for them. So I thought what I'll do is just put this one out. I'm going to put a picture up on Instagram and on Twitter and the people who get through to me in the space of a limited period, I haven't worked out the full details yet, will be receiving this pen free of charge. How's that? That sounds fair, doesn't it? So there you have it. One fabulous pen for which I'm very, very grateful. That's going to be used a lot. And one pen which is really very, very nice, but I haven't used it at all. So somebody else can make use of it. I hope that was fun, hope that was interesting. Do please let me know if there's uh, anything else you'd like to ask about the pens or anything, uh, or if there's ideas that you'd like me to answer in one of these videos. And apart from that, thanks a lot for watching. Do please, let's just work this out, the subscribe thing should be up there. Past video, if you're interested, is over there. And there'll be another video down there that's probably related to this, I think. But I hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe, hit the like button, share it with friends, and I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Now I'm going back to my tea. Cheers. Thank you.